Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 88. In this video, a new puzzle solving technique called multi value elimination will be demonstrated. Multi value elimination is used for solving ultra extreme Sudoku puzzles. The cell phone style coloring method described in DX Sudoku video number 87 will be used in this video. This video has five prerequisite videos listed here. Multi-value elimination, or MVE, is similar to bivalue elimination, or BVE. MVE uses the same chaining sequences and candidate-level special tactics as BVE. But with multi-value elimination, there is no premise cell. MVE has multiple assumptions instead of just one. You can use MVE to solve every puzzle. So you can use multi-value elimination instead of bivalue elimination. Try both and use the one you like better. But MVE is really meant to be used with puzzles that don't have any bivalue cells. And MVE is also really useful for solving puzzles requiring the brute force puzzle solving technique. As with bivalue elimination, multi-value elimination will require practice before you get good at using it. To be successful using MVE, you have to take good notes. A method of notation for doing MVE will be demonstrated in this video. Just keep in mind, solving ultra-extreme puzzles will require having patience. Consider the following Sudoku. This puzzle has 28 givens, 197 pencil marks, and 5 starting bivalue cells. Hudoku has rated this puzzle as having a difficulty level of 13,664. To solve this puzzle, Hudoku's puzzle solver used the seven base techniques, one X-wing, one bug plus one, two skyscrapers, one two-string kite, one turbot fish, and one hidden rectangle. One Sudaka, two XY chains, 15 nice loops, four almost locked sets, one finned franken swordfish and nine forcing chains and one forcing net i figured we'd start out with an easy puzzle as the first example the first thing we do is we get all the easy stuff out of the way in addition to the 28 givens we now have six values set in the puzzle what makes this an easy puzzle is that it has easy stuff to get out of the way before we go any further we need to save the current state of the puzzle from the file menu, we select the save puzzle as menu command. We enter 0 underscore sp as the file name and click on the save button. We can use this file to return back to this point if needed. Before we begin the chaining sequence, we need to change the color of Hadoku's selection cursor. From the edit menu, we select the preferences menu command. From the colors tab, we click on the selection color swatch. Normally, I set this to white because the default yellow color is annoying, but for this video, we are going to set the selection color to a shade of gray. We click on the OK button twice to return back to Hudoku's main page. As you can see, cell 5,5 is currently selected. Next, we highlight all the bivalue cells, and we update our notes. For MVE method 1 algorithm, we always select the first bivalue cell as the first cell in the chaining sequence. We update our notes. Notice we are using a new notation. The format is sequence number underscore, followed by a cell location, followed by the candidate chosen as the assumption candidate for the cell. In this example, the notation is read as, for step one of the chaining sequence, we are assuming cell 1, 3 has a value of 1. We save a copy of the current puzzle state under the file 1 underscore 13 1. We then right click over cell 1, 3 and select Exclude 5 from the pop up menu. We are now pretending cell 1, 3 has a value of 1 as indicated by the lone candidate within the cell. We begin building out our chaining sequence by highlighting all the cells having a possible 1 candidate. We are going to use a nice Hadoku feature for building out our chaining sequences. First, click on cell 2, 1 to select it. Then, while holding the control key down on the keyboard, we select every cell having a 1 candidate we want to remove because the 1 in cell 1, 3 is on. 
we now have multiple cells outlined in gray to indicate they are selected. We then right click anywhere in the puzzle and select exclude one from the pop-up menu. As you can see, the one candidates have been removed from all the selected cells. This multiple cell selection feature in Hadoku makes building out the chaining sequences much easier. Currently, the fives are highlighted. Here is another Hadoku feature useful for building out the chaining sequence. There must be at least one five in the house making up block one. We right click over cell one comma two and choose the exclude several command. We enter seven and nine in the dialog box and click on the OK button. Cell one comma two is now showing the five is on. After cycling through all the numbers and removing candidates based on strong and weak links, we come to a contradiction. We have two contradictions. We have two nines in the house making up row three, and we have no seven in the house making up block two. We update our algorithm notes for what to do when we have a contradiction. Notice the XX comment in our notes. This is here so we know which candidate to try next if a contradiction occurs. Whenever I add a new cell to the chaining sequence, I add an XX comment for each candidate in the cell I may use in the future. Since we are working with the first cell, we reload the 0 underscore SP file. We update our notes with a new assumption candidate. We save the current puzzle state to the file 2 underscore 13 dash 5. We now have a 5 in cell 1 comma 3 for starting a new chaining sequence. After cycling through all the numbers, removing candidates based on strong and weak links, along with special tactics, our chaining sequence has stalled. We update our algorithm notes to show what to do when our current chaining sequence stalls. From the file drop-down menu, we select the Save Puzzle command. We may need to come back to this point if we get a future contradiction. Next, we highlight all the by-value cells. We select the 7 in cell 1, 2 to be the next assumption to make in the chaining sequence and we update our notes. This second assumption is one of the key differences between multi-value elimination and bi-value elimination which has only one active assumption. Notice the XX12-9 in the notes. This is just a reminder to us this is the next assumption to make for cell 1, 2 if the 7 assumption ends with a contradiction. We save the current state of the puzzle to a new file name. We will update this file again if the chaining sequence stalls or ends in a contradiction. At this point, we are ready to continue the chaining sequence. The chaining sequence stalls. We update the 3 underscore 1 2 7 file and we highlight the by value cells. We pick cell 2 comma 1 to be the next assumption cell in the chaining sequence. We assume the 1 in cell 2 comma 1 is on and we update our notes. And we save the current state to a new file. We are ready again to continue the chaining sequence. We find a contradiction with two fives in the house making up block nine. We choose six to be the assumption value for cell two comma one. We update our notes and we create a new file. And we find another contradiction. This time there is no two in the house making up block two. Both candidates in cell 2 comma 1 end it with a contradiction. What we have now is called a backtracking contradiction. The logic works as follows. If we assume cell 1 comma 2 is 7, if the 7 is correct, then the puzzle must be solvable. This means one of the two values in cell 2 comma 1 must solve the puzzle if the 7 is correct. In other words, if both candidates in cell 2 comma 1 result in a chaining sequence contradiction, then choosing 7 for cell 1, 2 must be wrong. It may actually be the 7 is correct, but some previous assumption prior to the 7 is wrong. Eventually, the backtracking contradictions will work out the correct chaining sequence. We update our notes to show the backtracking or BT type contradiction. We put the reason for the BT contradiction in parentheses. The BT type contradiction is what gives the MVE technique its magic powers. We will eventually force our chaining sequence to solve this puzzle. We update our algorithm notes to take into account the BT type contradiction. B 
because the 7 had a BT type contradiction, we choose 9 to now be the pretend value for cell 2, 1 as shown. We update our notes and save to the new file name. And again, our chaining sequence stalls. We save the current state to the current file and we highlight all the by value cells. We choose 1 for cell 1, 7 to be the next assumption value. We update our notes and we save to a new file name. In working out the current chaining sequence for the current assumption, I found a skyscraper pattern at the candidate level. The skyscraper's candidates are highlighted in dark green. The skyscraper's pattern creates a set of group node weak links we can use to remove candidates highlighted in dark red and then continue with our chaining sequence. Using skyscrapers and other special tactics at the candidate level is what makes the MVE technique so much more productive than blindly and laboriously doing brute force. And our chaining sequence stalls, which is not surprising with a puzzle having this difficulty level. We highlight all the bivalue cells. We choose 2 for cell 1, 9 to be the next assumption value. We update our notes and we save to a new file name. This time the chaining sequence completes. We update the MVE algorithm notes to include what to do when the chaining sequence completes. At this point, we check for contradictions by highlighting each number. We are currently showing all the cells having a possible one candidate. We are checking to see if any house has more than one cell highlighted having a possible one candidate. We find no contradictions. We are now showing the twos. No contradictions. No contradictions with the threes. No contradictions with the fours. No contradictions with the fives. No contradictions with the sixes. No contradictions with the sevens. No contradictions with the eights. And no contradictions with the nines. At this point, we choose the current remaining candidate as the value of each cell. The puzzle is now solved. Next, we will solve an even harder puzzle, but this time it will not take as long as the first example. Consider the following Sudoku. This puzzle has 22 givens, 250 pencil marks, and zero by-value cells. Hudoku has rated this puzzle as having a difficulty level of 23,858. To solve this puzzle, Hudoku's puzzle solver used the seven base techniques, one two-string kite, one sashimi swordfish, one finned jellyfish, one nice loop, one almost lock set, four forcing chains, and two brute force puzzle solving techniques. Unlike the previous puzzle, this puzzle has no easy stuff to get out of the way. The MVE method 1 algorithm is dependent on having bivalue cells. This puzzle does not have any bivalue cells. So the MVE method 2 algorithm, we just use the next cell available going from left to right, top to bottom. We begin by choosing cell 1, 1 for the first cell in the chaining sequence. We assume cell 1, 1 has a value of 1. We update our notes, and we save our puzzle state to a local file. Our chaining sequence stalls. We save the current state. We choose the 2 in cell 1, 2 to be the next assumption in the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls. We choose the 5 in cell 1, 4 to be the next assumption. We have a contradiction. We choose the 6 in cell 1, 4 to be the next assumption. Our chaining sequence stalls. We choose the 4 in cell 1, 6 to be the next assumption. Our chaining sequence stalls. We choose the 7 in cell 1, 7 to be the next assumption. Our chaining sequence stalls. We choose the 5 in cell 2, 2 to be the next assumption. The chaining sequence completes without any contradictions. Next, we highlight each number looking for a contradiction. Check the threes, check the fours, check the fives, check the sixes, check the sevens, check the eights, check the nines. We find no contradictions. We choose the remaining lone candidate as the value of each cell. The puzzle is now solved. To summarize, we solved two very difficult puzzles using MVE. Saving the puzzle state to a local file is not really necessary. 
you can just use Hidoku's undo button for backtracking. When I do MVE on Endoku 3 with my cell phone, I just use Endoku 3's undo command for backtracking. And I use a separate notes app for keeping notes. Part 2 of the MVE video tutorial demonstrates how to solve the hardest puzzle I could find. Hudoku's puzzle solver needed to do brute force five times to solve it. It has a Hudoku difficulty score of 51,062. This completes DX Hudoku training video number 88. Please support DX Hudoku. Thank you for watching.